Hey, restaurant pros, do any of these feel like challenges to you when it comes to managing your kitchen? Your food prices and food costs are going through the roof. Your labor hours and labor costs are going through the roof. Sound familiar? What if I told you that one kitchen system can change it all? Stay with me and I'll share it with you in just a moment. I'm David Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. And I've been coaching restaurant owners since 2003, and I'm really glad you're here to learn. I'm about to open your eyes to the power of a great prep system and the impact it can have on both your food cost and labor cost. But before I go into this, if you like tips and tricks like this, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and oh yeah, that bell, so you're notified when my next video tip comes out. And for more tips and tricks for running a profitable restaurant or to hear restaurant owner success stories, make sure you tune into my podcast, Restaurant Prosperity Formula, found on all the popular podcasting services. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started with one quick question. When does your kitchen tend to fall down? Like when you've got long ticket time, when you've got unhappy customers, when you've got dishes going up in the window that are out, off timing and so they're dying in the window and you're either remaking it or worse, putting it out, out on the floor. When does your kitchen fall down? I'm gonna tend to tell you it's when you're not fully prepped and ready for the shift. It's in the middle of the rush when somebody on saute goes, crap, I need onions, jumps off the line and starts dicing onions in the middle of the rush. As other items are getting cooked, they're falling behind and now we're screwed. I would tend to say 90% of all your problems happen when you're ill-prepared for the shift. Again, being ill-prepared gives me long ticket times. It ends up giving labor creep because we're behind or adding labor for prep because we, we need jerk reaction and wanna make a change. We're comping meals, money we don't get, costs that are going out, but money we don't get because we're making up for the mistakes. Missed ticket times, which leads to waste, items dying in the window that go on the waste sheet that we don't get any money for. Well, one simple system can virtually change all of this, a solid prep system. A prep system is not cooks coming in and deciding what they need at the beginning of the shift. A good prep system involves the whole kitchen, but it's run by management. Now do know it's a clipboard system. Imagine not a eight by 11 piece of paper, landscape. On it, this prep system, it's got your date for the week. So this is run on a weekly basis. You're gonna be broken down into stations. So it'll be rows of stations and then all the items in there, but we're gonna break it into columns. The first column may be the items we're prepping. The container is the next one, how we, we what we put it into or we store it with. And then there's gonna be the, each day of the week, seven days of the week. And inside of those days, they're broken into three different columns, which is inventory, par level, and prep. Got the picture? Now let's say maybe we're, we're at one of our stations, we'll call it the, the grill station. You may have an item that is a third pound burger. The container may be a two layer half sheet that has nine burgers. So we might list it out as nine in parentheses and then two layer half sheet. So that's what, what it looks like when it's been prepped. Now, next we go look at Monday and we do our inventory count. The count is the count from the shift before. So it's kind of already filled in. We'll talk about the rules to running this to make it easy, but two, well, that's what I have on hand. My part level is 18. Two, taken away from 18 says I need 16. My prep is 18. See, it's not 16, we prep in full batches. So as days of the week go by, we may have more, our counts may be much higher than the par level the next day, but as long as it depletes at a reasonable rate that our food's not gonna go bad, we're gonna become more efficient with our prep. We have enough product on hand that we don't have all these other problems. It is critical. Let me give you another example. Let's say we have polenta cakes. And the, and the container is 48 half sheets. So there's 48 polenta cakes on a half sheet. Monday, your inventory is three on hand. Your par level is 24. Your prep is 48. Why? To make that half sheet, we make 48. We make a full batch. You get the picture? Awesome. Here are the general rules that you need to follow to make this easier. Number one, I kind of gave away. That is each cook who's standing in their station will do the count at the end of their shift for the next shift. 
Who's gonna be faster at counting their stuff? Somebody walking in the door, a manager going through the kitchen, or the person who made sure that was all part up for the beginning of the shift, worked six, eight hours in that position. They generally know, just kind of look, boom, four of these, two of these, six of these, and so on. So we want the cook who's finishing the shift to actually fill out this sheet in their station. Next, kitchen management prepares the prep list before the next shift comes in. So we've got all these numbers from the one shift, which is for the next. And we have our par levels, and then we say, okay, here's what we're gonna prep. So when we walk in, the next piece is your cooks and prep cook get started without spending any time looking, you know, instead of, hey, hey, what do I think I need? That's not a good use of your time. That's wasting time. Just think about your kitchen right now. You've got four cooks walking in, they're talking, what'd you do this weekend, da da da. And they're opening up and they're generally trying to decide what they think you need for that day. When management has the numbers and can do a better job and we can get them walking in the door and become efficient like that. Think about this. The next rule is your prep list will be 100% completed by the end of the shift, or maybe you're fired. Now, don't think it's you're fired. It's no, here's the rule. It's so important. We know that if we're not prepped, we fall down. Bad Yelp reviews, lower sales, higher costs. So it's unacceptable to go into the dinner shift not ready to go. So if you punch out at four o'clock and your prep isn't done, you're taking a bullet. But see, if you come to me at three o'clock and say, hey man, I'm falling behind, I need help. It gives management the opportunity to help to get the dishwasher to help, to get front of house people to help, all hands on deck that we can catch back up and then we can figure out why you weren't able to get the prep done, what else happened and what we can change in our operation to make it easier. But what I can't do is make product magically appear in the middle of a shift. So prep is so damn important that if you don't get it finished, you're fired. And last but not least, while I always promote the use of food and beverage software, for cost of goods sold and controlling your kitchen. With this clipboard system, when you have several weeks of prep filled out, you can laser focus on your par levels without software. You can see where you're prepping too much or where you're prepping too little. You can make the changes to your business. See, when you control your prep, you can one, reduce waste from overproduction. Instead of walking in and go, wow, we sliced so many tomatoes that every Thursday we're throwing away a, a half a Lexan of tomatoes because they're just translucent white. Hey, let's back off that prep. Number two, you can reduce cooking errors. Instead of things being timed improperly, cooked incorrectly as we don't have the ingredients. Number three, reduce comps and lost business due to long ticket times. Because when we're prepped and ready, your expo, your wheel, they can truly coordinate the five all days and what have you to make sure all the tables come up at the right time. Their ticket comes up at the same time. So it goes out and we have happy guests, great product. Number four, you can consolidate your prep hours. See, instead of prepping every single day, because we think we need to, when we can have a week long view, we can say, yeah, I can prep this item three days a week, two days a week. And the truth of the matter is we can reduce our labor costs because why? It often takes a prep cook or a line cook for that matter to prep not one, two, maybe even three batches damn near the same time it takes to do one batch. So all of a sudden we're reducing the number of days we're doing prep and we're making sure we're set because we can see it on this prep system. And five, you'll be able to look at your menu and decide what needs to change to reduce the number of man hours you're spending in your kitchen. See, if you find that your menu is truly so prep heavy, we can decide that, hey, I'm bringing, I'm making this sauce for one dish. I'm making this component to a dish for one dish. I buy this one product and I prepare it for one dish. And all of a sudden you look at all these unique items. Instead, you can say, wow, I could use this sauce in three different items. I can take this protein and use it in four different items. We start to look at our menu and reduce those, those items that are unique to only one item so we can reduce the number of hours in prep as well as reduce our food cost. See, if you're serious about reducing your food costs and labor costs in your kitchen, you will implement, train, and hold your team accountable to a prep system today.
If you're tired of not being able to leave your restaurant because no one else knows how to run it, I want to make sure you know it doesn't have to be that way. You can leave your restaurant. It is possible to build a team of people who know how you want the restaurant to run with trained and responsible people in place. You can give yourself time away. What would you do if you had time away from your restaurant? Would you sleep better? Would your relationships improve? Would you feel more relaxed? These are all things you deserve to experience as a business owner. It's why we own our own businesses. If you would like to learn how to own a restaurant that doesn't depend on you to be successful, click the link in the description to watch a free video to learn exactly what you have to do. Also, be sure to subscribe to get my weekly tips and watch these two videos to get more information and guidance for running a successful restaurant.